you have to hand it to Sony. When they release a flagship product, they really do a terrible job marketing it in the Western world. You either have to be a Sony fanboy or stumble across someone mentioning the audiophile Sony product. The NW-ZX507 is yet another flagship Sony audio product aimed at audiophiles. It cost $830 MSRP. Hold on a second. My wallet just punched my spleen. Brilliant. That's how I describe the ZX507's build. It is bloody brilliant. The player is fairly small. It fits within your palm. My fear was that the player would be too flimsy or light. It is not. There is some heft. The player is 164 grams or 5.8 ounces. The buttons are intelligently placed on the right side. The power button is at the very top on the right shoulder. The volume buttons are spaced just below the power button. The playback buttons are grouped together below the volume buttons and the hold switch is at the bottom on the right shoulder. I really like how Sony put the buttons together in groups. For example, the volume buttons need to be close enough to each other for use but far enough away from the playback buttons to not get mixed up. Sony, in my opinion, does that quite well. There's just enough distance between button groups that you know where everything is. The charging and data port is on the left shoulder, a unique place to put it, I think. I cannot think of any benefit or disadvantage of doing this. By the way, this port is USB-C, thankfully. The SD card slot is also fantastic, and it's on the left shoulder, just below the USB-C port. In most DAPs, the slot is either left open to dust or moisture or requires a needle to pop open. On the ZX507, you can easily open the flap, which is attached to an SD card tray. It is reminiscent of the SIM card trays in modern smartphones. You have to insert the SD card and press down so that it clicks into place. When that happens, the SD card will not fall out. On the top are the 4.4mm balanced and 3.5mm single-ended outputs. On the back, Sony implemented a smooth coating. I'm not sure what it is, but it provides protection for the back and raises the player just slightly. This makes picking up the player a little bit easier. I originally wanted the black version of the ZX507. In the product photos, I thought the silver color was a little distracting. Unfortunately, the distributors in the United States do not have the black version. Now that I have the player, I am glad I actually got the silver version. This will be a personal preference, but I must say the player looks and feels stunning. The silver color is less glaring than shown in the photos. Why should you buy Sony when there are many audiophile digital audio players for less and more money. Theo, Aston Kern, Shanling, Cowan, Lotu, Questile, these usually jump out in DAP discussions. The king of fake pop is Aston and Kern. These guys are fantastic in packaging mediocrity in a beautiful package and then upcharging by 800%. Aston and Kern has plenty of fans, and I am not one of them. Their stuff is stupidly overpriced and purposefully underdelivers. Theo is the prince of mid-level DAPs. Yeah, their cheaper stuff is good bang for your buck, but the flagship products are hit and miss. The M11 was a big disappointment. The M11 Pro makes slight adjustments, but clearly that isn't enough and Theo is soon going to let you buy their $1200 M15. Shanling and Cowan make excellent players that don't get much attention. Give them a chance. If you want good build quality and smooth sound, these brands are excellent options. But their user interfaces can be sluggish and the Android experience in some of their devices is very hampered. Then there are Lotu and Questile. Oh, sweet Jesus. If Astel and Kern is the king of fake, then Lotu and Questile are over the top, unrepentantly in your face and insultingly expensive. Both Lotu and Questile players look like bling a Persian prince would wear. Then there's Sony. They don't tell you what is inside their players. Whereas all the others I mentioned tell you they're using AKM or Sabre chipsets, Sony uses its own proprietary components. If you are the type that likes to compare DAP specifications, you might be tempted to disregard Sony immediately. There are some who simply want the newest AKM or Sabre DAC, and if that is not immediately apparent, they are disappointed. Well, whatever. 
The ZX507 is no exception to Sony's secretive specifications. This forces us to stop worrying about the latest DAC chipset. Instead, we have to look at the total package. With the ZX507, you get DSD and MQA support, and at this price, you better get both. Strangely, one of the Sony web pages says that you can listen to DSD only through balanced output. I didn't find any such notice about MQA. Sony includes in all its modern players a few pieces of technology that they think is fantastic. First, there's DSEEHX. Oh, come on. Will someone please make Sony stop throwing jumbled letters together when they name something? Ugh. The C is a digital enhancement processor. Sony says that it works particularly well for MP3 and AAC. It works for downloaded music files and streaming files. The C upconverts lossy files so they sound near high resolution. I've played around with this feature and yes, it does have an audible difference, but DC cannot add details that were excised from the recording when the song was compressed into MP3. I don't know exactly what DC does since Sony doesn't say, but either it just guesses what information is missing based upon the rest of the music file and adds some of it into the mix, or it is merely an EQ setting that works particularly well for lossy files. Can I just say this? If you buy an $830 digital audio player and use MP3 files, please return the $830 player and get yourself something for $30 on Amazon. And if you only listen to streaming music, you are better off buying something much cheaper. As I said, the C has some noticeable sonic change, but it's not near high resolution as Sony claims. The second technology Sony uses is called S-Master HX. Ugh, sounds like BDSM devices. Anyway, Smaster is Sony's proprietary digital amplifier. Sony says this uses less power and results in less heat, which then requires fewer heat sinks and causes the player to be smaller. Sony promises that the amplifier is capable of providing low distortion. The player has a 120 step volume adjustment for both balanced and single ended. There is indeed a noticeable power difference between the two outputs, as it should be considering the balance is supposed to provide three times more amplification. Sony doesn't provide THD numbers, whereas all other competitors do. I can't say how Sony compares numerically to the other players on the market. Oh well, using super sensitive IEMs like the Campfire Audio Andromeda, I couldn't hear any noise or distortion. Using full-sized headphones like the Odyssey LCD-4Z, I also heard no distortion or noise. The amplification leaves a lot to be desired on paper. Single-ended output is 50 milliwatts. Ouch. Balanced output is 200 milliwatts. Not that great either. Some people are going to laugh at these numbers. Look, I get it. It's not a lot. And difficult to drive headphones will not work with any Sony DAP. But if you have hard to drive headphones, you really shouldn't expect a portable player to do wonders. Here's the bottom line. Other manufacturers use off-the-shelf components and smash them together. It's a yearly competition between Fio and Shanling and Hibby and Astle and Kern. As soon as a newer DAC chipset is out, these companies try to shoehorn it into their next DAP and of course, charge more for it. Sony takes a different approach. They do their own research and development and created their own technology. It's the Apple approach. If you want to make a product, you better have control of its components. This will turn a lot of people off. But if you're the type that wants something unique, well, I guess Sony is basically competing in that field. The ZX507 uses Android 9.0, full Android. It has the Google Play Store, search bar, and all the other goodies you expect from stock Android. As far as I can tell, Sony made very slight changes to the obvious Android interface. There are a couple of DAP-specific options in the pull-down menu, and of course, the Settings app has options dedicated to the DAP. But other than that, I don't see any unnecessary user interface additions or deletions. Sony includes their own music player application. You can download any replacement app through the Play Store. Spotify, Tidal, Cubus, Amazon Music, Hibby Player, and any other music player and service app is supported. One thing I found a little frustrating is some sluggishness in the operation. It's not terrible, but I'm spoiled by modern smartphones. The narrow screen doesn't really help with typing into search boxes. That keyboard is a little crammed. 
The YouTube app noticeably hesitates when clicking on videos. Again, it's not terrible, just noticeable. We're talking about one second of delay. That delay is not present in the Sony Music app, however. By the way, videos seem to play fine. Of course, the screen really is not made for that. I found that all YouTube videos I played seemed a bit washed out and the color not quite correct. This was odd since the screen is otherwise gorgeous. The ZX507 also has a rotation setting. I didn't find it initially. It has to be turned on. The setting can be activated from the pull-down menu. With this on, any application that supports rotation will have native support for rotation on the Sony player. Overall, the interface is clean. It's not the fastest I've seen. The FIO M11 and Hibi R6 have slightly faster responses, but come on, we're talking one second delay. Sony has its own sound signature. I have two other Sony players, the NWA55 and NWWM1A. Oh boy, that's easy to remember. There are minor sonic differences between these two players. The ZX507 slots perfectly within the sound signature of these other players. Again, in A-B tests, the differences are minor, if at all, audible. There are some occasions where I think one or the other has slightly more bass or more treble extension, but that gets all turned upside down on a different track. I think it's fair to say that you should not expect immediate differences in sound signature amongst these three players. Let's focus on the ZX507. I use the Campfire Andromeda and Odyssey LCD 4Z to listen to FLAC files. The overall signature is smooth, a bit warm. I'll explain. There is no harshness at all. There is no distortion or noise. The treble frequency is rolled off, but just enough to prevent ear piercing. In Scurzo for X-Wings, the treble has energy and clarity, but does not become harsh. That treble roll-off is slight, and for someone who is treble sensitive, it might be the perfect balance between too much treble and muted treble. The mids are clear. Depending on the headphones you use, the mids do sound about two steps ahead. In Want You Back by Haim, the vocals were absolutely clear and undistorted. The primary vocalist sounded two to three steps ahead of the mix, dead center. The backup vocalists also sounded clear. They retained their individual tonalities throughout the song. I was a bit surprised by the small nuances in the primary vocalist lyrics. There were small changes in her tone that I had not noticed before, things that had not jumped out in any of my previous listening sessions. I've heard this song countless times using various gear, and maybe I was paying more attention now, but I gotta say, the vocals coming through the ZX507 were among the clearest I have ever heard. The bass is well controlled. There is sub-bass presence that is not overwhelming. There is some melding between the sub-bass and mid-bass. It is a little hard to explain. The bass isn't muddy, it's just simply uh, a little muddy. However, the bass does not interact with the mids. It does not overwhelm any recording I have listened to thus far. People often talk about soundstage when it comes to digital audio players and amplifiers. Uh, no. Soundstage isn't a thing for DAPs. Soundstage is the combination of the original recording process and your headphones. The digital file being played through your DAP won't be altered. I suggest that if you are interested in this issue, please research it, and not on HeadFi. Consequently, if you use the HD800S, you'll get a wider presentation than if you use the LCD-1. The ZX507 overall has a smooth performance, and one that I think might be very pleasing for a lot of people. There are a few issues with the ZX507. First of all, at $830, you deserve a hell of a lot more in the packaging. I am immensely annoyed with Sony's greed in this regard. The ZX507 comes with a USB-C cable, and that's it. You don't get a protective case, a wrist strap, screen protector, an SD card, or even a wall charger, just the player and its essential cable. I am flummoxed by this decision. Significantly cheaper DAPs offer a silicone protective case, but not Sony. Cheaper DAPs include screen protectors, but not Sony. I have thrown away more accessories from a $100 DAP's packaging than what Sony provides with their flagship player. This is penny-pinching and off-putting. Yes, if you're going to buy a flagship DAP, you will likely spend money to get yourself a case, but not to have even a cheap silicone case is disappointing. The second issue is of battery life. 
Sony says you can get between 20 hours and 9 hours. The higher number is for MP3 files, whereas the lower number is for high resolution audio through balanced connection. If you intend to use FLAC files through balanced, expect to get about 8 hours of use. That's not a lot. Yeah, it may sound like you'll get you through the workday, but just barely. I have DAPs half the size of the ZX507 that last days without needing to recharge. The Cowan Plenu D2 comes to mind. Consequently, if you want to use the ZX507 all day, and I mean actually all day, then you'll need a power source. A portable battery pack is essential. I had to think carefully about the ZX507 before I bought it, so I purchased accessories like a portable battery pack, screen protector, and silicone case. All of this adds up to another $50 on top. But there's not much else I can really gripe over. The ZX507 has faultless build quality. It feels like a premium flagship product. It can drive any IEM and most typical headphones. It has stock Android 9.0 with minimal alterations. And the sound, well, you know, that's subjective. You may not like it. But if you have not heard a Sony player, you might be pleasantly surprised. If you do not like Sony DAPs, then the ZX507 won't win you over. Sony is staying with this sound signature for better or worse. And if you're in the market for a flagship DAP, look, Sony players are unique. Maybe starting your Sony journey with the ZX507 is overdoing it? You can get Sony experiences with the excellent A45 or A55 players at a cheaper price. But I have to admit, the 507 is indeed a beauty to behold. For those who have expensive gear, the Sony NW-ZX507 seems to fit right in. I am starting a new series for flagship products. I have noticed that there are few, if any, in-depth reviews and walkthroughs of expensive players and other gear, and I want to change that. What I propose is to provide in-depth content. For example, with the ZX507, I plan to release videos discussing power output, the Sony music application, implementation of third-party apps, and common issues on how to get around them. This will require a lot more work. Consequently, these flagship videos will be made available to patrons on Patreon. If you want access to those videos, you can get that by becoming a patron. For non-patrons, some of the things I discuss in the Patreon videos will be included in the conclusion videos of every product.